for being unveiled at the Kenya Kwanza running mate. Your Excellency, I may not pride myself for attending this ceremony. If it was only a preserve of Kenya Kwanza, I'll be very proud. But 41 presidential candidates will do exactly what we are doing today. Whoever, whatever we do after this, will show the difference between us and those presidential candidates who are unveiling the running mates like us. Your Excellency, where you come from, there is one saying that says, Kuza mtoto si kazi. Kazi nikumlea mtoto. Unveiling Honorable Gashagu as a running mate, si kazi. Kazi nwakikisha William Ruto na Honorable Gashagwa mumoja ameka state house na mungine anatukaribisha hapa kwanzia tarehe tisa mwezi wanane. That is the most critical thing going forward. And therefore, as we leave this place, we have to take this ticket to every household. In Kenya Kwanza, unlike the other areas, our competitors to say, we're not taking William Ruto to every household in this country. We're not taking Honorable Gashagwa to the households of this country. As we market the two of you, we are taking to the house of this country a message of hope. That's the difference. We are taking real and practical solutions to the problems facing our people. The problems facing Kenyans will not be solved through pedestrian declarations. The problems afflicting our people will not be solved through political rhetorics. The problems facing Kenyans will be solved through well thought out programs and activities tailored towards addressing the plight of our people. And that is the message we are taking home and that is the difference between us and our competitors. Your Excellency, I'm happy because a big portion of your opening speech was lifted from agreements that have been signed. Agreements that are legally enforceable. And therefore, these are not just mere promises to the Kenyan people. These are commitments. It's an oath between Kenya Kwanza and the Kenyan person. I will not today go through the commitments that you did on behalf of PA and on behalf of the coast people. The difference between us and them is that as we go campaigning, whatever statement that will come out of our mouth is a statement that is lifted from a written document, from an agreement that is being held by a third party. That is the difference. The other side, their policies are rather reactionary. They only react to what Kenya Kwanza has thought through. For every well thought, well thought out policy from Kenya Kwanza, there is a street version from Azimil. A good example is what happened in Mombasa yesterday. Because of Kenya Kwanza committed in writing 
signed an agreement forward on behalf of the people of coast that when we form government on the 9th of August, the port operations in the port of Mombasa, a dedicated program, both administrative and legal reform program, will be put in place so that the economic sufferings brought about the transfer of those activities is eased out. That is thought out very well in Kenya Kwanzaa. We had a street version in Mombasa yesterday from Azimio. From nowhere, if you look at their policies, if you look at the manifesto, the issue of returning the operations of the port does not appear anywhere in any written document by Azimio. The statement by the presidential candidate of Azimio yesterday was reactionary, a street version of a well thought out policy by Kenya Kwanzaa. It is laughable and indeed an insult to the intelligence of the coastal person for Azimio to say once the form government after winning the elections of 9th of August that they will reverse the operations. Kenyans, if you look at the Azimio leadership, indeed you know that Azimio is the current government. If they know they did evil to the people of coast, they can reverse it now. They don't have to wait for Mwishmo Raila to be president. They are government now. So to the presidential candidate of Azimio, that was a bluff. We're intelligent people. Zamani mulisema tunaka chini ya minazi. Kungoja nazi zianguke. Not anymore. We, as a people, we know exactly what we have secured in Kenya Kwanzaa. Hence the reason why the entire coast will look the direction that Kenya Kwanzaa is moving. Because in Kenya Kwanzaa, there lies a solution to a land problem. In Kenya Kwanzaa, there lies a solution to a dwindling economic opportunities at the coast. And indeed in Kenya Kwanzaa, our space at the national level shall be opened. Your Excellency, from the power fraternity, you have a word that we will go to every corner of this country, every village, knocking doors with humility, unlike the other side, kicking doors as they look for votes. We will be kneeling as we ask for votes from our Ken. Because that's what we are. And to echo what Governor Mtua, my brother Governor Mtua just said, as pa, we are very happy to be in Kenya Kwanzaa. Because finally, the knee is off our neck. We can breathe, finally. Finally, Your Excellency, on the two propositions, one made by Moses Kuria and the other made by Honorable Adam Duale, I believe the team that we put together, the economic team that we have put together, that is their first task. Let them return to us a verdict, a verdict that will make a Kenyan in Makueni, in Kilifi, in Kirinyaga, in Kisumu, be proud because they're in a country that values fairness and equity. So thank you.
Thank you, Excellency. And uh, I will know if I no longer now drop first us. I, would, I take it officially. <laughs> now that you have insisted on it. Uh, Your Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, uh, party leaders present, uh, members of parliament, all of us who are gathered here today, I join my colleagues in congratulating Moshimua Ligadi Gashagwa for now being officially unveiled as the Deputy uh, President. He'll be able to fly, to fly the flag together that we have had enough experiences together. We have fought together in the trenches. We have suffered together. And therefore, you have one corrective duty. And the duty is to ensure that the, on 9th of August this year, Kenyans will no longer wake up in suffering and pain that have been occasioned by this administration. We agreed all of, of us together to join Kenya Kwanzaa because we knew that together we can start. And we knew that if we are divided, we shall fall. Again, with all our experiences, and that, that is why you can see today, some joined a few days ago, others have been here from beginning. We have sailed in different ships, but at the end of the day, we are now in one ship. That is Kenya Kwanzaa. We are in agreement that nothing is going to divide us. We are in agreement that uh, whatever it takes for us to win this government, in a peaceful process, we are going to apply it to ensure that we live to the dreams of our, our forefathers. What is there in our national anthem that there must be plenty for all Kenyans? that let there be plenty for all Kenyans. And therefore, for us to prosper, I'm happy today that I have looked at the model bottom-up. But I'm also very happy that in the Big Four agenda, which the Deputy President is very passionate about, he is the architect. Everything in the agriculture sector and growth transformation strategy was well penned down in this office from beginning to the end. The only person who understood the, the, the four pillars, the big four agenda, is His Excellency, the Deputy President. We can try to approach the process from all other corners, but at the end of the day, is that you want that Kenyan down there to ensure that there is food on their table. To do that, the only way out because you have to start with the small things, but this is not small. Agriculture is the backbone of our economy. And therefore, I will be very happy to work with your administration, because I know very well that already the groundwork that you have done, you are going to actualize the agriculture sector growth and transformation strategy. Because if you make sure that Kenyans are properly fed, this will now spur any other uh, among the other four pillars. Because if we ensure that Kenyans are properly fed, we are producing enough, then this will still automatically bring about manufacturing in this country. Value addition, employment for our people, and at the same time, ensuring that we have money in our pockets. If we have money in our pockets, we shall now be able to buy houses. If we have enough money, we have enough employment for our people, they are going to be able to buy houses on their own, even without having any program, but they can be supported. Health is, curative, is not curative, it's preventive. And therefore, again, if you take care of agriculture and Kenyans are well fed, it means that, again, these Kenyans will not be attending this simple, simple medical attention that we are occasioned by poor feeding. And therefore, for me, I take it with a lot of passion that we are going to articulate those issues, and agriculture must come first. All the speakers here, we have talked about minimum, guaranteed returns, about uh, uh, fisheries, about uh, livestock. It's all about agriculture. And this is one sector that has been ignored. 
The other day I was looking at what the, uh, the current administration has done since 2013 and how far we are allocated. And you can see how much was allocated to manufacturing. And we are talking of uh, taking this country to the next level about prosperity. How can you do that when you ignore the sectors that can spur growth of our economy? And therefore, it is my belief that we shall put money where it is necessary, not building a, a, a railway line for legacy, but first of all, ensuring that Kenyans are properly fed. It is good to have those roads because, again, you cannot trade without those facilities. But at the same time, why should you put up money, billions of shillings, trillions, when Kenyans cannot feed themselves? And therefore, I joined this team knowing very well that you are taken care of. Kenyans are taken care of. That the priority of our people will be what will drive your government. Your Excellency, there are issues that touches every region and Kenyans. You have spoken out, and it is important that you have now come out clearly. On issues of uh, one man, one vote, one sharing, and equal representation. It is dear to us, and I know very, very well that you'll be able to navigate, you'll be able to carry all of us together so that all of us are satisfied. And as you do so, Your Excellency, there is one issue that really concerns Kenyans that has not been addressed here today. Your Excellency, the security of our people collectively, and especially being assured that any Kenyan can live in any corner of this country, that they can own property anywhere in this country, and equally seek elective positions anywhere in this country. That's the only way which will bring cohesion in this country. It's the only way that we accept that Kenya is for all of us. Lastly, we already understand our team to Nawajua. We know that the team manager is your friend. We know their team captain, Nibaba. Namuswahiri Usema, Kiboko, Aliye Toa Inshala, Hapasui Mtubu. And therefore, we can clearly see their strategy. We are able to analyze them. They have been there for a very long time. And I can assure you they are tired in all aspects. We have a very energetic team. And uh, any challenge ahead of us, we shall be able to surmount it. Ligadhi, you have my back. I will support you because I'm supporting this team. The strength of any pack is not a single animal. It is about the teamwork and the strategy. Together, we shall succeed. God bless Kenya. God bless you, Your Excellency. God give you a shagwa viva. Thank you.